Edfu Foundation Incorporated utilizes science and the teachings of our ancestors to improve humanity. We want to reunite and uplift our family throughout the planet. Our message or theme for 2021 is Original People United. We work hand in hand with our sister organization, the Conservancy Corp investing in the future of humanity through our programs and advocacy. We seek to move our civilization from its current state to that of a type one civilization on the Carter Jeff civilization scale and beyond in a spiritually holistic way. We stand by the 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Durban Declaration and Program of Action and support United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals and Environment Justice. Support Eiffel Foundation by checking out our page and subscribing. Welcome to Afronauts. We want to thank you for being here today. We have a great show. We have our usual cast of characters, our co-hosts, Lawana Richmond. What's up, Lawana? How are you doing? Oh, I'm living the dream. I decided that the Afrofuturism round is going to be hybrid this year. So now I get to look for a location. And we also have the accomplished, the man, the myth, the legend, Eric Dean Seaton with us. Thanks for joining us, bro. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It was fun to be here. Man, so humble with his signature hat on. Look, he had the battle. He had the battle too. Y'all don't know about that. That's so <laughs> Eric is always clean. He didn't they're represent me. They're represent and we have with us Mook Nito. What's, what's up, Mook? What's happening, man? You know what's happening, man. Sir Wands, my clique. Let me say what's up to them. The Woods, you know what I mean? Where I'm from, you know, and Afro Nas, baby. We're about to get out like we usually do, baby. Today we have Tim Fielder. Hey, how y'all doing? Um, graphic novelist here. And Afrofuturist. OG Afrofuturist. OG. One of them. That caught me off guard when she called me that, but it was true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I did read the book that the girl that called you an OG. Yeah. Um, so weird. Uh, the curator was like, oh my God, you're like some kind of OG Afrofuturist. <laughs> she just called me old, man. And he looked at me, and then she looked at me, and her eyes got really big, she was terrified. I was like, no, 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 relax. You're correct. I am an OG guy. <laughs> <laughs> you also said in your book, um, you draw Negroes in space. I like that too. That was uh, a... <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was a line that got me in a lot of trouble, but uh, it's funny, so I see it from time to time. But exactly. And who did you get in trouble with for saying that? That's what I'm saying. Well, like, you know, we live in a media scape where when you become a, a public persona and you're you're kind of representing a multinational conglomerate, you know, it doesn't hurt to, you know, be careful what you say because that affects all these different moving parts. So, you know, I, I, there, you know, I have to pay attention to who my audience is. Right, right. But your original audience, your community understands when you say you draw right. Negroes in space, you draw <laughs> right. Negroes in space because well, we ain't been there. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? I can say that I draw Negroes in space. But if I'm saying, and I can say it without fear, it's just that uh, I have to be aware that one, I have a career, you know? Right, right. I've been allowed to do something that no one on this particular level has been allowed to thus far. I mean, Afrofuturist. I'm the first one, the graphic novel from a big five, which is weird. Cause you know, they could have picked better than me, but uh, they did, they lost their minds and chose me. So I, I want to rep because it's, it's not just me representing, you know, the company, but it's also representing the audience. You know what I mean? These folks have put a lot of responsibility in me and they want me to do good work. You know, and they, my reviews have been extraordinarily good and, uh, that means a lot to me coming from my rear. So, yeah, I want to try to do a good job for them. Hey, what, what, what would we say then? We, uh, we can't say Negroes in space. What would we say? No, no. Here's say, black, say, black, say black people in space. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, I hear you can say that. Here you can say that. Negroes I'm just saying, I'm just saying to them, you know, what, 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 what is legal? Well, I mean, so I think the conversation becomes in like, so we, there's two, I, I mean, there's always been two conversations going on, right? So then there's, there's that conversation, like, yo, this is a community conversation, what happened, we're amongst family. So, you know, this is where we can be um, a little more free and loose, right? right and then, code switching. Yeah, co yeah, exa exactly, no, exactly. It's just code switching, you know, and I'm okay with that. I, I'm just, uh, you know, I, I feel a little bit like uh, there was this point where someone asked, uh, made this comment about LeBron James. He said, man, I'm just glad to be here. So yes, <laughs> that's how I'm feeling right now. I'm really grateful to be able to do the work that I'm doing. And uh, this book has been well received. And uh, you know, I, I was, the jury's still out, I don't know. We'll see. But right now it seems to be really, really positive. I want to double down on what Tim was saying, because I, I agree with him, but I, it's interesting. I have a, a perspective about, I feel like now after the civil unrest this summer, he could, he might be able to say it. When, they, when the look comes, you explain it. Say, think about it. Yeah. Think about it. Before discovery, how many were there? Right. You know what I mean? Like right. before discovery, you know, how many were there? The, the original Star Trek was a melt. Sorry, I'm in Vancouver. Two, you know. three. Yeah, right. The, you know, there's always one character you know, even on the great original Star Trek with Gene Roddenberry's uh, original vision of unity and all that, there was still only one, you know, uh, but I think the awakening, uh, and I call it an awakening because I've heard from a lot of people who didn't realize that they were part of the problem uh, and and they, and they it didn't necessarily make them racist, but they were a betting racist. Right. They were and I feel like that's, at least in Hollywood, that's the thing that, that has, really opened up a lot of people's eyes is that they didn't consider liberals a lot of liberals did not consider themselves racist at all but didn't realize that their actions were abating the continuation of racism and continuation of holding people of color down or holding them to limits or you know so that so it's interesting that i can understand what he was saying and, and I, I would love to hear what happens if he said it or if he has said this post the civil unrest Right. Well, but there's, there's that, but also, you know, Eric, just, you know, a lot of people, man, look up to you. Everybody, you know, you veteran, you know, you in there, veteran journeyman within that Hollywood system. And it's, it's not just so much the work that you do is how you carry yourself. And people pay attention to that. People pay attention to that. I agree. And I think a sentence like that, responding to a conversation, right. it's much less aggressive than if you walk in a room and just say that right away. Right. And right. I think there's a total different tone. In responding, right. people are listening. So when you're saying that, it makes them think. But if you walk in a room and you start dropping that stuff, that stuff is true, but it's just inter it's, it's so context. All the things are viewed. All about context. Right. Yeah. Context and how it's received when you give it, you know what I mean? Right. Like right. Uh, like that thing with uh, Sharon Osbourne and all that stuff this week, she was so defensive, she couldn't hear what they were saying. Right. You know what I mean? She was so quick to say, we're calling you racist. We're not calling you racist. We're saying that this man is just liberally saying that he does not believe this, this woman, this black woman, for any reason. If, and what was crazy is if she even was even given the weather. So you're going far beyond. If you had said, I don't necessarily believe that this was the situation that happened in England and all this other stuff. No, you're just calling her a straight up liar on anything. Like, wait, what, why? How do you, how would you know? Right? You know what I mean? So it's that, it's like, you're right. How it's perceived and how it's received is very, you know, plays a key role. Yeah, I'm, and so then it goes back to my, my original question was like, like Tim said, it's like, it's code switching, but <clears throat> there comes a point Right. Where where do you move the needle of progress forward when like we understand that there's code switch and there's code switches in your house. Right. Like you would go out, hang with your boys and you come home and your parents would be like, yo, listen, you're, on, you're home now. You're not with your friends. Right. So That's we understand. I married. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so it, it's a thing. It's not necessarily just code switching when I'm in amongst whites and, or with, you know, a racial wise thing, but when does the, when does progress come? Right. And I think uh, Eric hit on that, like with uh post the civil unrest, right? Like normally, like you're saying like, Oh, Negroes in space or your hair being this way, or just certain conversations were kind of 
again, like Eric said, like there's people who weren't necessarily against it, but their silence contributed to the continued oppression, right? And so therefore you couldn't have those conversations. It took something like the civil unrest and the torture of George Floyd to make those conversations more relevant and come to light. And therefore then now the trickle down effect, which trickle down is actually doesn't really happen, but the, the tertiary effect is um, that you could say Negroes in space in a conversation and people aren't so taken aback, right? So right. where does the progress come in? I guess that's my question with the code switch. And when can we truly be ourselves without having to worry about looking over our back or offending someone or someone not understanding us? Cause we're always trying to understand other people, but right. like, you know what I mean? I feel like we're always code switching. I feel like the, the whole essence of any time you see a person of color in a prominent job, know that you are always representing whether you when you the moment you walk out that door in your house you are representing and it may be big it may be small but know that you always are which which means i don't have to turn it on and turn it off it's always on whether i whether i wanted to be on or not the moment i walk outside the moment i walk on one of these sets i mean you can't when you look at me you can't even see but one thing <laughs> so it's always on you know what i mean and i feel like if we adapt for me it's worked if you adapt that aspect that you're it's always on it's easier than saying you turn it on and turn it off. You know what I mean? Cause right. just also in response to that, it's like, it's it's like, because this book I've done is it's, it's kind of having an effect. So I kind of like say what you need to say, but let your work do the talk. It's the book, you know, about a black man who can't die. That in, in, in and of itself with the history of black male characters and high fatality rates in our in our media, you know, for science fiction particularly, uh, they either die or they're relegated to secondary status. Black women generally, uh, lately we've had some changes, but have been not visible at all. And so this story is for me with Infinitum was just to move to try to rectify that within that kind of entertainment medium within a book, but to make it big. You know, it's not like this, this is not like I I didn't try to do this before with the New York Times years prior, but they passed on this story. I get it. You know, Black Man is a Mortal God is probably not the movie you want to make, but- Why well, run from Robert the truth? Collins did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what can I tell you? You know, it was nice. So yeah. my job is to make sure I decide what hill I'm going to bat, uh, what, what hill I'm going to die on, which one I'm going to battle for. That's the that's the point for me. I'm much more interested right now, since particularly now, since my life has altered a bit since this book is out, is to really get to the next books because I have things, I got stuff to do. Right. It's like it's like you know, as you go, the the circumstances change and the stakes change exactly. and everything changes. You have to change with it. You know what I mean? You can't. It's like a lot of like if you look at the activists from back in the day. They was all babies, you know what I mean? Because they had that juice in them and they didn't have that fear. They just was, they didn't have nothing to lose either. You know what I mean? So it was like all in there. But if you see that same activist 40 years later, he's trying to do it in a different way. He doesn't have that same technique, you know what I mean? Because he knows he's not gonna be able to get it with that technique. You know, I'm gonna get it with this technique, you know what I mean? Stylistically, the work that I, I did 35 years ago is not dramatically removed, far removed from what I did in, in Infinitum. The difference is I'm 54 years old. I've been through all kinds of personal and professional scenarios, some good, many of them bad. And now I can apply all of that to the work. And what that does is that add levels of, of, of detail to the work so it can pull the audience in. And you know, we're, we're in this field. I was uh, in an interview with uh, Stephen Barnes and uh, Tasha Womack the other day uh, for the Hampton Film Festival and they were, they were asking the question about film. And it's just, that's obviously where everything is going. I mean, I've done this book. It's gonna be eventually, you know, 